Hello guys, this is Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com and we're here today with episode number 49. In our incredible new tutorial series where you're unleashing the power of your Raspberry Pi Pico W. What I will need you to do is pour yourself a nice strong glass of ice cold coffee. That would be straight up black coffee poured over ice. No sugar, no sweeteners, none needed. And as you're pouring your coffee, as always, I want to give a shout out to our friends over at SunFounder. SunFounder is actually sponsoring this most excellent series of video lessons. And in this class, we will be using the Kepler kit for Raspberry Pi Pico W. Now, most of you guys probably already have your gear, but if you don't, look down in the description. There is a link over to Amazon. You can hop on over there and pick your kit up. And believe me, your life and my life are going to be a whole lot easier if we are working on identical hardware. But enough of this shameless self-promotion. Let's jump in and talk about what I am going to teach you today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you my solution to the homework assignment that I gave you in lesson number 48. But I'm going to start by asking how many of you were successful. If you were successful with the homework, leave a comment down below. I am legend double chest bump. And if you were not successful, leave a comment down below. I fold it up like a cheap Walmart lawn chair. Okay. Now, if you fold it up on this one, don't feel too bad. This is the type of problem you might run into as you're writing your thesis for your master's in electrical engineering from Stanford or something like that. So this is getting to a pretty advanced topic, but never fear. I'm going to show you how to do it. I'm going to clearly explain it and it's going to make sense to you. Okay. When you see how I do it, it's really going to make sense. And if you didn't think of it, you'll probably think, ah, why did I not think of that? Okay. Let's have a sip of the old go juice here. And let's talk about, let's talk about what the homework assignment actually was. What the homework assignment was, was to advance to, to move forward in our little project where we're creating a little widget that will measure pitch and will measure roll and to get better accuracy, to get better performance out of our little widget. So we need to kind of back up and talk about where we, what we've been through over the last, say, three lessons. Okay, our first attempt at building a little widget that could measure pitch and roll, we took, met, we took the data coming off of the accelerometers, the X, the Y, the Z accelerometers. We did a little trigonometry and we calculated the pitch and we calculated the roll and we found it was very accurate. And we also found it was very snappy, very fast. It responded very quickly. So it was fast and it was accurate. But what we also found is, is that it would respond to vibration or it would respond to acceleration and deceleration, and that would lead to an error signal in our indicated values. And so we incorporated a noise error onto our device. And so it was fast, it was accurate, but it had noise in the data. Then what did we do? Okay, we want to get rid of the noise. The next attempt, what we did is we incorporated a low pass filter where we filtered out those rapid changes coming from the accelerometer in response to vibration or acceleration, and we filtered those out. Now it was very accurate and it was very low noise. We got rid of the noise, but it became a little sluggish because the more we filtered that noise out, the more sluggish the response came. And so our first attempt was fast and it was accurate, but it had noise. Our second attempt was accurate and no noise, but it became sluggish, all right? So then we tried a third approach, and that was instead of using the accelerometers, we used the three gyros, the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis gyros. The gyros measure rotational velocity around the three axes, and so we said, well, the new position, the new angle is equal to the old angle plus the rotational velocity multiplied by the 
increment of in time since our last measurement. And so we could sit there and just track and kind of integrate over that rotational velocity or over those rotational velocities. And what did we get? We got something that was really low noise and we got something that was very responsive and fast. But then we saw there was a drift problem in there that just sitting still, those sensors would start drifting and the readings would start rift, drifting. So we were fast, we were low noise, but we weren't accurate. So then what is the solution? The solution is we want the best of both worlds. We want to take what we like about the accelerometer, which is it's fast and it's accurate. And we want to combine it with what we like about the gyro, which is, is very low noise. And we want the be best of both worlds because the three things we tried, we could always get two out of three, right? We could get two out of three. The three things that we wanted was fast, accurate, and low noise, fast, accurate, low noise. And with each different approach, we could always get two out of the three. Well, there was that old sign, two out of three ain't bad. But for engineers, are we happy with two out of three? No, we're not happy out of two out with two out of three. We want three out of three. So what are we going to do? We're going to do a little bit of math. Don't worry. I'll explain it to you. We're going to do a little bit of math and we're going to create a complementary filter. That means the accelerometer and gyro are going to complement each other and come up with the ultimate solution, which is fast, accurate and low noise. OK, sound good. I hope it does. There has been way too much talking and not nearly enough engineering going on here. So what we want to do is I don't want to completely write this code from scratch. So I want to start where we left off last week, right? Last week we had a program that calculated roll and pitch based on the based on the measurements coming from the gyros. Just let's just get that so we'll have a starting place. So I will need you to go to the most excellent www.toptechboy.com. And then I will need you to use this happy little search icon here and search on something like measuring roll, pitch, and yaw using the three axis gyro on the MPU 6050. You'll come here. This is the schematic of how we have it hooked up. We've got the 1306 display. We're not using it today, but we've got it in the circuit because we will be using it in future lessons in the MPU 6050. You can see how we have it hooked up. We'll come over here, right mouse click and copy. And then we're going to come over to Thani. <clears throat> we're going to come over to Thani and we are going to paste that in. And now just to make sure that the universe is in proper working order, we're going to run this thing. And what do we expect? Since this is gyro, what we expect is we expect very low noise and we expect very fast operation. But then we expect an accuracy problem because we're going to see a drift problem. But let's just go ahead and I think I should show you this view so you can see. Let's just make sure that it's working. OK, so we'll come over here now and we'll run this. And then I am going to yaw and you can see the yaw is green. It's fast and there's no noise. I'm going to roll. And in blue, it's fast and there's no noise. And then I'm going to pitch and it's what? It's fast and there's no noise. But if I just leave it, what is the problem? Look at the orange. Look at the pitch. It's drifting. This is not moving. But the orange says it is. It's, it says it's moving at about a degree per second. And that is leading to a large error. Okay. Fast, no noise but not accurate. All right. So now how do we fix this thing? Well, let's come in here. Let's kill the program. OK, first thing I want to do is you can see that we are measuring the gyro, the X, the Y, the Z in the gyro, and then we're calculating roll and pitch. Well, now we got to realize that this we, we've got to be more specific. This is the roll from the gyro. So I'm going to call it roll G is equal to roll G plus the uh, plus the y gyro okay the y gyro that is the angular uh, the angular velocity times the time so velocity times time that's how much we've incremented and then we add that to where we were before and similarly i'm going to call this pitch g so the new pitch value is equal to the old pitch value plus the rotational velocity times 
how long it was from the last measurement. And so with that, you're just kind of integrating over the velocity to track position. Pretty cool, right? Okay, remember that since we're using the old value, we had to initialize those variables. So instead of roll up here, I'll call it roll G. Instead of pitch up here, I'll call it pitch G, like that. And so that is pretty good. That's That's got that cleaned up. Also, we are not able to measure yaw with the accelerometers, and so I can't get a yaw value with the, accel with the accelerometers, so I can't create this complementary filter for yaw. We can only do pitch and we can do yaw, okay? So I'm going to take that out, and since I took that out, we better not try to print it either, so I'll take that out. So let's kind of clean that stuff up. Now we want to get the data from the accelerometer, and the easiest thing would be to copy and paste these statements that are reading the gyros. And then instead of X gyro, I'm going to call it X Excel. And then I'm going to call it Y Excel. And then I'm going to call it Z Excel. And then I'm going to be reading what? I'm going to be reading the Excel in the X. I'm going to be reading the Excel in the Y. And then I'm going to be reading the Excel in the Z. Okay, then I calculate the roll from the gyro and the pitch from the gyro. Now I want to calculate the roll from the accelerometer and the pitch from the accelerometer. This is not rocket science. How do you do it? I take those acceleration vectors. I do a little trigonometry, explained this two lessons ago. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining it, but I'm going to do something that you should really very, very clearly understand, right? You should really very, very clearly understand that the role in the, uh, the role uh, from the accelerometer is going to be equal to the math.arc tangent, a tan, and then what? The value from the x accelerometer divided by the z accelerometer. That is going to give us a result in radians, so we need to convert it to degrees by dividing by 2 and dividing by math.pi and then multiplying by 360. Again, I explained all this a couple of lessons ago. And just like we did roll, pitch is going to be very similar. So then I am going to say pitch from the accelerometer. Get rid of this extraneous nonsense. This time instead of x, it's going to be y. And now I should have roll from the accelerometer and pitch from the accelerometer. All right, so let's come down here and let's see if we can we can uh, plot these. This R should now be R from the gyro, and this P for pitch should be pitch from the gyro, and then this is going to be roll from the gyro, and this is going to be pitch from the gyro, and then I think if I copy this and paste it right here, like that, I can then say this is going to be roll from the accelerometer, and roll from the accelerometer, and then this is going to be pitch from the accelerometer, and then this is going to be pitch from the accelerometer. Now what this should do is this should just kind of combine the stuff that we did in the last few lessons. What it looks like when you get roll from the gyros versus what it looks like when you get it from the accelerometers. And so let's see if I can come up here and print this. Okay, let's see if I can come up here and plot this. And so we're going to run it. Okay. And then when I roll, okay, I yawn, okay. When I roll, look at one thing that happens when roll. They're, they're right, but they're opposite from each other. So they're using a different sign convention. So the accelerometer is saying like the left low is the positive direction and the gyro is saying the left up is the positive direction. So we've got to kind of get those two things to match. You could do it whichever way you wanted, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up. Let's see. I'm going to come up here and I'm just going to flip the sign on. Which one of those would that be? That was roll and roll was y. And so on the gyro, I'm just going to say take the negative of what you think and that way you'll be in sync with your neighbor, the accelerometer, okay? You'll be in sync with your neighbor, the accelerometer. So now if I run these things, it should be the same. So I'm gonna come here, and then you see when I roll the green, 
and the blue are the same. That's good. And then when I pitch, the red and the orange are the same. But what do you see is the problem? The red and the orange are drifting apart. The red and the orange are drifting apart. Now, it is the orange that is the correct value. The orange is the correct value because it is coming from the accelerometer. But then what you see is the problem is if I shake it, give it a little shaky shaky there, the orange has noise in it and the red doesn't. Okay, now you see they move together. They move together. What do I like about the red? It moves very accurately and it doesn't have any noise, but it just wanders off. It just wanders off. So what do I want? I want that lack of noise and that fast response, that lack of noise. What is that? That's pitch. Okay. That lack of noise and that fast response that the red is giving me but I want to combine that with the rock steady anchor accuracy of the data coming from the accelerometer. Does that make sense? There's roll. You see on roll, they've even now the rolls have dip, drifted apart between the green, between the green and the blue. And then uh, let's see, you can see the error is in the blue, which is the accelerometer. Okay. The noise is from the blue, which is the accelerometer. You see that gyro doesn't have any noise, but the problem is the gyro is giving you the wrong answer. So you see, you see what the problem is? So what do we want to do? We want what? We want the best of both worlds. Now, when do we trust the accelerometer? Over time, it always gives you the right answer. You just can't trust it in the short term because it might have vibration. It might be giving you noise. So what do we want? We want in the short term to trust the gyro because it doesn't have noise. In the long term, we want to trust the accelerometer because it always ends up at the right answer. So how would we do that? It's a little bit like a low pass filter, like you could think of high pass filter the, the, the gyro and low pass filter the accelerometer and combine those two together. But then it's like you're taking this and you're taking this, but you're not really fusing them together. You're not really melding them together. And so this is what I want you to see. This is what we're going to do. Now we're just going to have like a roll com uh, complementary and a pitch complementary roll comp pitch comp. And what that means is putting a complementary filter on the roll and putting a complementary filter on the pitch. And if we're going to do that, we're going to come up here and remember, we're going to have to initialize those things because it is one of those things that you're incrementing onto the old value. So you have to give it an initial value roll. The complementary filter is equal to zero and then pitch from the complementary filter is equal to zero. All right, now, now we're going to come down here, the moment of truth. So what are we going to say? We're going to, let's do the roll from the complementary filter. Well, first of all, what are we going to want? First of all, what are we going to want? We're going to want the roll from the accelerometer. We're going to want the roll from the accelerometer. But why do I like that? It's the right answer. But do I trust it in the short term? No, I don't because it might be feeding me noise. So I'm going to give it a confidence of what? Times 0.1. I will trust it to 10%. I will trust it to 10%. Now, when I'm over time trusting it 10%, 10%, 10%, it will always end up at the right answer. But if it gives me some crazy signal, I'm going to kind of ignore it. I'm going to listen to who? The gyro. So I need to add to that. Well, if I trust the accelerometer 10%, I want to trust the gyro, what? 90%. So I'll put 0.9 times. Okay. Now what you might say is, okay, just take the gyro up here which is the old gyro plus the rotational velocity times the time. And just like I put acceleration here, 
I should just put roll G here. But no, that would be taking accelerometer data, weighting it, gyro data, and weighting it, and adding them together. But that's not blending them together so that the magic happens. The magic happens where here, instead of creating a roll G based on the old roll G, I'm going to create it based on the old blended data, the blended data. So do we put roll G here? No, we put roll comp because that is the blended data. That last data point had the best of both worlds. So I want to take this and I want to do the increment based on the starting point of the best of both worlds. You see, this is not the best of both worlds. This is. So I'm going to take that and then I'm going to add to it what? The, uh, I'm going to add to it, what did we call that? It was the, uh, it was the, the Y gyro, okay, the new measurement, the Y gyro. This Y gyro, it's not the best of both worlds, right? But it is getting the good thing about the gyro. So we're going to take Y gyro, and then we're going to multiply it by, how long was it there? Well, since the last measurement, which is T loop, like that. Okay, so I take where I was before, and I add the amount I move based on the rotational velocity times the loop time. And then I'm going to trust that 90% because I've got the best of both worlds here. But then I always come back and I anchor things to the value from the accelerometer. Okay, now it's going to be very similar for pitch. And so I'm going to come here and then I'm going to say the pitch compensation is equal to the pitch from the accelerometer and then it's going to be the best of both world pitch which is the pitch complementary filter plus what this time I do believe this is going to be the X gyro like that okay now we're still going to print the roll and the pitch from the accelerometer that's just the raw data that's accurate but noisy and then here I'm going to put the roll with the complementary filter and the pitch with the complementary filter. And then this is going to be the roll with the comp the roll with the complementary filter and the pitch with the complementary filter. Okay. Now, when we run this, what do we expect? Do we expect to see any drift? We do not expect to see any drift. Why? We've got our anchor here. We're going to always be anchoring our answer to the rock. The rock is the calculation from the accelerometer. Okay. And then to that, we're going to change it by this compilation, which is the result, which is the best of both worlds. But everything is always anchored to the rock. <clears throat> Could this crazy thing really work? What do we expect? We, we're, well, we're, we're going to see noise. We're showing two things. We're, well, we're showing four things. We're showing the results from the accelerometer, and we're showing the results from the complementary filter. And so the accelerometer we expect to be fast and accurate, but when I shake it, you're going to see an error. And we don't expect to see any drift because the accelerometer doesn't have drift, and on the complementary filter one, I'm anchoring it to the acceleration. So this crazy thing, this is so crazy, it's so crazy, it just might work. Let's run it. Okay, and it gets started there, so let me give it a value. Okay, now let's look. Let's start by rolling. Okay, I'm going to roll, and look at that. Look at that. Both the accelerometer, both the value from the acceleration, the accelerometer, and the value of the complementary filter, they are both the same. Okay, now the complementary filter, is it drifting? No, 
It is not drifting. Is it accurate? Yes, it is accurate. What is the question? And is it fast? Yes, these things are responding fast. You see, they're not sluggish at all. But now, what about noise? Uh, let's see. Yeah, okay. Now, look at this. They both have noise. They shouldn't both have noise. Why do they both have noise? Okay. What you can see is the blue is a lot more noise. The blue is a lot more noise than the green. And then same thing with pitch. It all looks good. Okay. And then when I shake it, I've got more pitch in the accelerometer and I have, I have more noise in the accelerometer and less noise with the complementary filter. So that looked pretty good. It was fast. It was accurate. There was no drift but we did have the noise problem. All right, well, why do we have the noise problem? Because I'm leaning on the rock too heavily, and I'm not leaning heavily enough on that short term where that noise comes in. I should be leaning more on this one. Okay, I should be leaning more on this one and less, less on this one. So let's say instead of 0.1, let's say, what if I said 0.05, okay? It's still there, my rock is still there, but I'm gonna be giving more weight to this combined value. Okay, so now let's try that. Okay, so I roll, that's good. And now look at that. You see how the green has much less noise than the blue? The green, the noise went way down, but there's still a little bit more noise than I want. So I'm gonna say 0.01 and I'm gonna say 99 and here 0.01 and 99. All right, the rock is still going to always get me to the right answer, but in all that shaking, I'm going to be looking at the gyro more. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, so I'm going to come up. Do you see how it's still very snappy? It's very quick. And now, look at that. Boom! Did you see that? The accelerometer, the blue one, it has the noise. But now what? The green one, the complementary filter, it has virtually indetectable noise. But is it still fast? Yes, you see, I turn it up. I turn it up and the complementary filter one, the green, uh, the, the, the uh, green, the complementary filter, it is tracking the blue. The green is tracking the blue quickly. It's dead accurate. They're both the same. And then I've gotten rid of the noise. Success, victory. Guys, is this, is this amazing? Is this amazing or is it, am I just an old man who gets, uh, who gets excited about silly things? Let me see if I can show you that better. Okay, there it is. Okay, you see a lot of noise in the blue, no noise in the green. And then let's see in the pitch, in the pitch direction. Let's see if I can do it. There's the pitch. And same thing, a lot of noise in the orange and no, no noise in the red. Now you see a little noise, but you see it's because I'm not keeping it at exactly the same angle as I move it. So that little bit of wavering in the red is from that. And so I come here, I come here, I come here, I come here. No noise, fast and dead accurate. The power of math and the power of the complementary filter. Okay, so let's see. This is the perfect solution, right? The perfect solution. <laughs> but I'm always picky. So let's see if there's something I don't like. I'm going to stop it, and I'm going to run it without it auto-scaling, uh, you know, so I can really look down here very closely at the details. And let's see, there it auto-scales. So what should I be comparing? I want to compare roll which is a uh, roll from the accelerometer, which is blue. Okay, so do you see this blue value? That is the actual value. And then the green value is from the filter. So what's the good news here? The green value from the filter, even at a very zoomed in scale, it is matching what the real number is from the accelerometer, just taking the noise out. But what do we see happening here? The orange is for the roll. Uh, the orange is, uh, 
the orange, I should be, yeah, the orange is the pitch from the accelerometer, and I need to compare that to the compensated pitch. So I should be comparing orange to red. And what we see is they track, okay, they track. But if we, if we zoom really, really, really far in, when this thing is sitting here, when this thing is sitting here, there is kind of like this little bit of air. Now you wouldn't see it when I did this, okay? You wouldn't see it when I did this. When I do that, you hardly even see it, okay? But what is happening, there's a little gap. There is a little gap between those two. Now why is there a little gap between those two? There's a little gap between those two because this is my rock, but I am looking so much at this one, there's a tendency for the rock to be fighting the drift, and they come to something, they come to something where they settle to a constant value, but it is, uh, let's see, what would we call this? This is not a drift between the orange and the red. This is kind of like a steady state, tiny error a very tiny error of maybe one degree between here and here. Okay, are we happy with that? No, we're not happy with that. And I'll tell you, the way you might try to deal with that, let's say that I went back to point nine, and then I went back here to point one and say, give us more anchor, give us more rock, and that'll go away. Well, let's see, again, we're looking at the red and the orange, okay? And actually, it didn't take it away, did it? It didn't take it away. So let's go back to point. I, I did the wrong one. Never mind. I, I should be looking at pitch. And so this one, you might say it'll take it away if I do it on pitch. So I'll make this point one. So you want more anchor, you want more rock and you want less of this high-speed business. So now does that bring the red and the orange together? Yeah, that kind of brought the red and the orange together, but now look what happens. I pitch, okay, things look good, but now I start seeing, okay, I start seeing in the red, I start seeing some noise. And so then let's say I go to point 0.05 and point 9.5, and again, we're going to be comparing red and orange. Okay, let's let it, okay. That looks like we took most of it out. Okay, and then I lean. Let's do it like this. Okay, but you can see still I've got some error. I've still got some error in the red. And so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to come back to 0.01, and then I'm going to go to 99, like that. Okay, and then what am I seeing? I'm still seeing some error between the red and the orange. Okay, so you see, now I've gotten rid of the drift. I've gotten rid of the noise. My measurement is fast and my measurement is accurate, but I can end up with this steady state offset of an error of maybe a degree or so. I want to get rid of that, okay. And so that is, that is your homework assignment for next week. You got to stay fast, you got to stay accurate, and you have to stay low noise, but you've got to get that error that steady state error out of your pitch. Now it looks smaller here, right? It looks, that steady state error looks smaller here just because the scale has changed, right? Just because the scale has changed, but you can see there's a little error. Now we know we have more drift in pitch, but if we zoomed in on the roll, we would see that as well. So what, we wanna get rid of that steady state error. That's your homework assignment for next week, and then that will be the grand finale. That will be finally everything brought together.
why have I spent so much time on this lesson? Why have I spent so many lessons on this topic? Because you need to know how to use a low pass filter. Okay, for any project, you need to know how to use a low pass filter. You learn that. And you also, in the real world, the data is not perfect. And how do you deal with imperfect data? And you think, oh, well, you average it. No, averaging doesn't work. You can use low pass filters, you can use high pass filters, and you can use complementary filters. For this particular problem, it required a what? It required a complementary filter, which is kind of like melding the low pass and the high pass together in a way that the magic happened. Okay, but now we've ended up with a little steady state error and what do I need to do? I need to force that steady state error to zero. Okay, I need to force that steady state error to zero. And then I'll show you how to do that next week. And even if you don't care about, even if you don't care about uh, accelerometers and gyros and tilts, you would run into the exact same problem if you were doing a uh, PID motor controller, a speed controller on a motor. I did a project once where I had an electromagnet and I had a steel ball and that steel ball was suspended in midair underneath the magnet so it just hung there because I had a very sophisticated system that would pulse the magnet to keep the ball suspended in midair exact same thing you had to force that steady state error out so the techniques that i'm showing you i'm displaying t them to you you know in the in the context of an mpu tilt meter but these concepts are applicable to a broad range of engineering problems and so i'm hoping you'll take these and i'm hoping you'll put them in your toolbox and you'll use them when you run into such problems in the future okay guys i really hope you're having as much fun taking these classes as i am making them as always i want to give a shout out to you guys who are standing with me on patreon you guys are keeping me in the game because youtube has decided they don't like grumpy old guys and they want 15 second shorts or silly cat videos and so they're kind of pushing us to the side you guys on patreon you're the ones keeping me uh continuing to make these videos and i thank you for it you guys can also help me by giving me a thumbs up also helps if you leave a comment down below if you haven't already subscribed to the channel and when you do make sure that you ring that bell so you'll get notified when future lesson drop lessons drop and finally and most importantly Share this video with other people because the world needs more people doing engineering and fewer people sitting around watching silly cat videos. Paul McWhorter with TopTechBoy.com. I will talk to you guys later.